Hey, we're going to continue working on our color channel editor. This time we are going to make some sliders, one for each color channel, red, green, and blue, and we're going to adjust them to um, either increase or decrease the amount of that color in every pixel in the image. So, you know, we'll have a slider that says maybe plus five for red, that'll add five to the red value of every pixel, or minus 26 for blue, it'll take away some of the blue in every pixel, the same amount for each pixel. So what we have so far is uh, we've got a couple buttons to open and save files and we've also spent the time to convert our imported image, our original buffered image, into a, an array of pixels of ints and each of those pixels is alpha, red, green, blue. It has an alpha component, red component, green component, and blue component. Now managing each of these pixels separately um, sorry, like looking at each of the separate channels isn't super trivial, but we're going to use some fancy math to do that. Um, so let's get started first of all building some sliders. Uh, I'm going to need a label for each of them. So there's one for, you know, like red, green, and blue. And we're not going to spend a lot of time on the GUI, but this one we're going to, we're going to say is red. This one is green. This is the usual order. And this one is blue. And maybe I want to label each of these correctly. This is the uh, red label. And this one is the green label. And this one is the blue label. Again, notice these all start with lowercase letters, but when there's a word in the middle, they have a capital letter. Uh, one more thing, maybe I'll select all three of those holding shift on my keyboard and change the horizontal alignment to right and then I will make them all the same width. Now let's just make things line up a little bit nicer. Okay and maybe one more thing I might space them out just a bit more and I could be more careful about this but that's good enough for now. Over in your palette in the swing controls you'll find one called slider. It might be in a different spot than mine. I think it probably is actually. I'm just going to drag one in here, line it up with my uh, red. Uh, that looks pretty good right there doesn't have to, it should not go all the way to the edge because we're going to add something else over there. Do another one for green, line them all up. And blue. Okay, three sliders. And now I also need uh, sort of a box at the end that says what is the value on that slider right now? And I'm going to use text fields for that. And as I say, I'm not going to spend a lot of time making the GUI pretty, but if you, you should probably be, if you're going to do this as a real application, you'll want to be careful to make sure everything's super nicely lined up. And all of these little uh, bits that are showing up around here show the restrictions and the connections between all of these different things that we're making. So you want to be careful as you make these that you don't end up uh, uh, connecting things that you don't mean to. Then when somebody resizes the window, everything goes all wonky. So in a real application, you're going to test that and make sure that everything's cool. All right, so this is going to show the value that's that this uh, particular slider has. Now each of these sliders, I want to I'm highlighting again, holding shift on my keyboard. Each of them has values that go from um, the minimum will be negative 255, and the maximum will be positive 255. And the major tick spacing, I'm going to make uh, 64. Uh, okay, and one more thing. I want them each to start at zero. That's down here. Value will be zero. And I want to paint, not labels, I want to paint uh, uh, tick marks. There we go. Okay, so I've got some tick marks on there. And uh, that's it so far. I'm going to add one more thing a little bit in a little bit. So first, let's use this um, field over here to show what value is uh, the, the slider is currently set at so the user can see it. Because these are really fine movements here. It's gonna, they're going to want to know if they're at positive 192 or positive 189. So each of these is currently editable. We don't really want that. We don't want the user to edit those. So there is a spot for that. Maybe I missed it already. Let me get rid of this. Oh, it's right at the very top. Editable. Uncheck that. Now the user cannot edit those fields. Okay, those text areas, text fields. Okay, now um, let's start with slider number one here. 
I'm going to right click on it, choose events, and change state change. That means the user moved it, or in some way it got moved. Click on that. That's going to make, just like with the action button, it's going to make a new um, uh, method that will be executed anytime the slider changes. And I can see now I forgot to change the name of my slider. I'll do that in a minute. Uh, I'm going to call a new method called update uh, values. I haven't made it yet, so it's underlined in red. I will make it in a minute. Go back to my design view here. That slider should be my red slider. This one should be my green slider. And this one should be my blue slider. And as I think I may have mentioned before, NetBeans is really sweet about, there it is, it has changed, or it's called refactoring, has changed that label for me so that it matches my new name, uh, variable name. And same with these text fields here. This needs to be the red value. Um, that, that's probably good enough. It's, it's a uh, text field. Uh, this will be the green value. And I'm clicking on it and seeing that it's highlighting the one that I actually want, that I have them in the right order, blue value. OK. All right, good. So red slider, we have that method. Let's do the same thing for green and blue. Update all uh, update uh, values. It is, and then blue. When the blue slider changes, Alt Shift F to reformat everything. So it's nice. Okay, there we go. Nice. Now let's go ahead and make that method private void update values. It's going to run the same bit of code for each slider. It doesn't actually care because no matter which slider changes, I want to just update the values in here to match whatever is uh, whatever the slider has on it. So let's do that for each one. The red value, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the red value text field. I want it to call red value dot uh, set text and I'm going to set it to the value I get from the red slider. And we're going to change this in just a second dot get value. Uh, now that is going to be an int so I would want to add a, uh, an empty string to the end of that. Now this is going to be pretty good. Let's maybe run this to show you what's going to happen. Um, this is going to be pretty good but not exactly perfectly what I want. And I'll show you why as soon as this runs here. Okay, there's my red slider. Nothing there yet. Hmm, okay, we need to fix that. And also, those are positive numbers and those are negative numbers. I want a plus sign in front of the positive numbers. So we should do that as well. And I haven't done these ones, so they don't work yet. I wanted to fix this next little issue here before we go on and do the others though. Instead of just getting the value, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, instead of just getting the value and dumping it in there, I'm going to modify it if necessary. So the temporary value I'm going to get first is going to be uh, red slider, sorry, red slider dot get value. Okay, that's going to be an integer. If temp value is um, greater than zero, if it's positive, then I, I don't want to just put in the um, uh, the value by itself. I want to also stick a plus sign in there. So then I will do red value dot set text to the plus sign plus that temporary value. Otherwise, I'm going to do red value dot set text. I don't need this. I'm going to use the the word temp value, the variable temp value. Okay. Let's see where we're at now. Apparently I've messed something up. Oh, not set action. Sorry, I don't know where that came from. Set text. Okay. Good. Okay, so I've got a little if statement for my red part. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the blue part. Temp value is now going to be my blue slider dot get value. I'm going to use exactly the same code here. And 
instead of red, I'm going to put blue. And one more time. I guess I did them out of order. Green slider, green value, green value. Oh, my brain won't be comfortable with that, so I'm going to move those up, put them above the blue ones. Okay. All right, everything is in there now. That's all good. And we're going to have one more quick problem to fix in a second. I think we might only get our sliders done here in this video. We might have to do a separate one for um, actually creating the filtering part itself. Hey look, oh they all show up now, great. When it's zero it just shows the number zero, positive numbers. goes right up to 255, down to minus 255. Okay, that's sweet. Now those numbers don't show up right away though, so we just have one tiny little change to make. Let's go way up, oh, let's shrink that down. Let's go way up to our uh, constructor. There's init components which makes all the sliders and everything and our file choosers and stuff. And then let's just do a quick call to update values. So as soon as the JFrame pops up, it's going to um, quickly update the values based on what's in the sliders. Hey, look, they're already there, all set to zero. And then when we start modifying stuff, these are how we will adjust each channel, and then we'll save the file. Okay, so that's uh, we're getting pretty long already, so I'm going to finish right there for, for now. And uh, in the next video, I will show you how to modify the pixels as we go along using the, the, uh, the channels, alpha, and then in, these, in this case, we're going to adjust red, green, and blue before we set it, um, stuff everything back into our new image, and then save it. Okay, thanks.